Welcome to the Milestones Podcast, where we engage, inform, and encourage parents in strategic moments in their family's lives. Whether your family is close to the Lord or far away, this conversation is for you. Welcome, families, back to the uh, Family Milestone Podcast. Uh, This is Ryan Taylor. I'm joined by my friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. Miss Leslie is here joining us. Miss Leslie, how are you doing? Doing great. Good, how are you doing? Good, doing good. Doing good. Madison in here. Madison, how you doing, brother? I'm doing really good. Thank good. you for having me, Ryan. Absolutely. And then we got Draper to round out the Quattro crew. Come on. Yes, sir. So glad to have you guys with us. Thank you for listening in. So we just want to talk to y'all as your child is maybe facing a change in their life, whether it's accepting Christ or they're reading their Bible, they're thinking about getting baptized, any of those that kids go through, whether it's a child to a teenager to a, a, a college student, we are excited to just help you guys know that in this crazy world, this society that we live in, that you still have an incredible opportunity to raise a godly child uh, during this time. So I guess just as parents, let's just let's just share with everybody listening in maybe some hard things that we remember uh, raising our kids or maybe hard things we're facing right now as a parent. So uh, any, any stories, anybody want to jump in to just encourage some of these parents that, hey, all of us, we face hard times in this crazy world? Well... You know, I can think of one because it's fresh. It's very recent, but you know, Zoe is a senior in high school, mm-hmm. and um, and going into the senior year, she wanted to have her future figured out, figured out, yeah. and that's what kids are told now. Like you know, mm-hmm. everybody knows what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. So anyhow, so she was stressing, and uh, we just kept saying, you know, let's pray about it, seek the Lord, and He'll guide us, and uh, and He did. I mean, when when I tell you that He opened a door, like she goes from. Um, no recruitment at all in volleyball to being able to sign a full volleyball scholarship to a uh, local junior college here at Lawson State. And just to see that all play out and to see her faith grow in that, seeing that, wow, like mom, dad, they told me this and we were praying, but to see the Lord move in that, I mean, it's just been phenomenal it's kind of one of them i don't know man it's like you know them god moments you know it, as a parent you see you just like write that down <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a god moment but uh <laughs> at least at least uh, in regards to that because my kids are, are a lot smaller a lot of god moments but you mentioned hard moments last night we you know going down <laughs> for a, a, an evening this already sleep. is funny this, just and thinking about the age at, of your kids i know a, five four and one <laughs> And and normally they all sleep pretty good, but sure enough, we started to hear some crying. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of the night, Angela gets gets up, checks on our little girl. Yeah. She goes back to sleep. Apparently, she woke up again. Angela got up again. I did. I didn't even know it. Um, and uh, but then I heard the third time. So I got. So we had to get up three times because little yeah. Maddie didn't want to go to sleep. Yeah. So uh, she's not a volleyball player yet. <laughs> yet. Um, yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, but early. hey, it's hard. So if you're listening to this and you didn't have a full night's rest last night, hey, you are in good company. That's so right. if I say something that doesn't make sense, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, you know, Tinley's at that age of the change right now. She made her decision during VBS last summer. Uh, she tugged at me and was ready to walk forward during our, our Christmas service. So got to do that just to be a part of that during her change season and set up her baptism hopefully coming up in the next couple months or so here. But her her biggest challenge or hardest thing that we're going through with her is in this walk. And again, it's a God moment for her to learn and to grow is really for her. It's, it's just letting go of self mm. and thinking of, of yeah. others. And uh, one of the biggest thing as, as a child, as y'all can all remember when we're little kids playing sports, which Tinley's involved in me, me, and Pop and Paul Paul and 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 Riri, everybody wants to give her five bucks, you know, even if she probably turned the ball over five times in basketball and didn't make a shot, she still walks out of that place with ten dollars, right, Draper? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what does she want to do with that ten dollars? She wants to, you know, spend it and keep it for sale, which is great, you know, but we're yeah. trying to teach stewardship and and uh funny when we go places and she'll be like, Oh, I really want that. You know, mommy and daddy can get that. Sure. I mean, you got ten dollars, right? You, you can get that with your ten dollars. Oh no, I don't want that. I don't want, I, yeah. I don't want that. So uh, it's it's that journey that we're we're walking with her, just kind of helping her understand. You know, just self desire and 
and uh, not so much uh, selfishness, but uh, losing, letting go more of herself and thinking of others uh, first. So she's she's going through her change season right yeah. now. So want to encourage you parents that that all of us are walking through that as well and have been there. So yeah. uh, hard thing uh, going through with Tenley right now. So so yeah. <laughs> And I'll encourage everybody, even yes. when your children are in their late 20s and early 30s, you're still walking through these things yes, and right. probably on your knees more so in prayer than you were even when they were little. Right. And uh, I think even now, as through all the different years as they were growing up, um, as a parent, sometimes it's hard to not jump in and try to rescue your kids. Mm, sure. Sometimes right. you have to let them walk on through a situation, yes. through That's a right. season. Now, you might not be rescuing them physically, but you're definitely in that quiet place, in that still place before the Lord and just lifting them up to Him and just asking God to intervene and right. intercede to God and direct as only He can. Yeah. He can. And yep. so uh, that's for, for now till eternity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. I and can... that's such a great word yes. that you just spoke there, Leslie, because as parents, our default response is we want to jump in and we want to fix right. it. I'm going to, I'm going to beat up that <laughs> yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it, as your kids grow, you get to a point where you you can, but it's not going to be good if you jump in. Right. And a lot of times we're delaying or hindering what it is God is doing in that situation. Yes. So we jump in and we like the Lord is like, this is my child. That's right. That I'm. <laughs> disciplining or I'm teaching, get out the way. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. But my mother did that a lot for me. I was one of those rebellious teenagers that she spent many a times on her knees praying for and stuff like that. So I'm one of those kids who comes back around Valleydale Church or the Shelby County community and they're like, you're you're a children's pastor now? Wow. <laughs> no. The Lord really does work. Yeah, there, he really course. does work. That's right. My mom was on her knees, and I, I, I got a lot of switches out of trees and brought yes. into the house, too. Uh, I did, too. Yes, did same too. Here. But, you know, one of the things, you know, talking about, you know, our parents praying for us, my dad, that's something that he continues to tell me all the time. Absolutely. Hey, bud, I pray for you every day. Yeah, that's awesome. And so even as this conversation, as we talk about a parent's influence, now that I'm a parent— just knowing, hey, here's what my earthly dad is doing for me. Mm -hmm. um, he's still modeling, hey, okay, I I'm praying for you every day. And so yeah. what do you think I'm doing for my kids? I'm praying for them every day. Yes, that's right. That's good. And um, so anyways, um, it's a blessing to have yes. parents that pray. Amen. Yes, right. And it's not even for what they're going through right now. Mm -hmm. I could remember back uh, Donna Gaines and so many others teaching us, you know, I'm already praying for my children for their spouses. If it's yes. their will mm -hmm. for them yes. to be married, I'm yes. already right now. Not three days before the wedding, <laughs> yes. but years before, That's you right. know, whatever God's will is in that situation yes. or whether it be... Um, as your children are about mm -hmm. to, to go into college and yep. and just jobs and everything else, it's like God, what what doors are you going to open for yes. them, and what doors are you going to close? Mm -hmm. And and in those moments, may we just continue to pray and let you be God, yes, and us step back and be whom you've called us to be, yes. and right. just encouragers. Yes, so. you know, I want to touch on that real quick, Leslie. What you saying, praying for their their future spouses. That's something that I've been doing for a long time now mm -hmm. for the girls. It's praying for their future spouses. Well, my girls are in high school now, and as of the date of this recording, they hadn't been on a date. They hadn't been asked out, and that bothers them. Um, and they probably, if they listen to this, be like, oh, my goodness, Dad, I can't <laughs> believe you said that. But here's what I tell them all the time. I say, you know, um, and I used to feel real bad about it, but then the Lord just kind of spoke into my spirit. He was like, Draper, you've been praying for years for their spouse. Don't stop now. Don't settle. They shouldn't settle for some guy that is not the Lord's person for them. And so I could say to them confidently when they come to me and they're like, you know, we're talking. It's like, you know, Zoe, I always, she's like, you know, I'll probably go be out of high school and I hadn't been on a date. And I was like, and, and I could tell, I was like, baby, I am praying for your spouse now. I said, there's mm -hmm. a guy that the Lord has for you. And I don't want you to miss him by being with Mr. Wrong. Mm -hmm. right. So so if I could save you a whole lot of heartache and headache, if you would just be patient and walk with the Lord in this, I promise you it will be way better. And it's just so much comforting. And to be able to say that to your, your kids, like, hey, I've been praying for your spouse. And I'm not, you know, you're not trying to dictate, not trying to, hey, this is a nice guy or a nice girl. You just... Hey, I'm praying and I'm seeking the Lord. So I encourage parents, even now, if you're not doing that, man, pray for, you know, uh, whether the Lord wants your 
kid to be married or not married and pray for their, their spouses, their future spouses, even now. I don't care if they're two years old. That's right. <laughs> That's right. These, these are all great topics. I think we could sit here and talk about all this stuff and the Lord continue to lead us. But Draper, since you're kind of uh, touching base on Zoe and Piper and, mm-hmm. and your kids, and you can even think back when you were a kid and your parents raising you, what is the importance of a parent to like see like Zoe finding what she wanted to do and then Piper, the talents and the traits that God's given her? How is it important for us as parents when our children, our kids are going through this change season that they're finding who God's created them to be to help them maybe enhance those traits or those talents that God's given them to to bring glory to him in a crazy society where maybe that's not accepted, but how can those traits and, and, and talents maybe help them continue to lead, lead a godly life? I think it comes down to spending time with your kids, yeah. mm-hmm. spending time with them, listening to them, putting your phone down, and really and truly listening to them, observing them, seeing how, like, what gets them excited? Yeah. Like, you know, like, what do they light up about? Like, if you start bringing up a conversation, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, Piper is into crocheting, okay, and she's really good at it. Yeah. But for the longest, I didn't understand it because I don't understand yarn. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a crafty person. I'm sure. a guy. I work outside, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I had to lean in and start understanding, and she would explain yarn to me. She's like, no, Dad, this is a polyester. This is a nylon. This is a cotton. And there's been many trips to Hobby Lobby and the sure. Joann's. And I'm just going to tell you, some people in Hobby Lobby, they get aggressive over them sales now. Oh, I'm just yeah. saying. They, they, <laughs> they're very aggressive. They know exactly when it's going on sale, yes, too. Yes, they do. Yes, and they, they are do. aggressive. Mm-hmm. But just, you know, uh, walking the aisles, you know, talking to her, or I'll, you know, go to her room, and we'll just sit there. And I was like, hey, what are you making? What kind of stitch is this? And she'll be like, oh, well, this is a double stitch, and this is a – this is a this and this is a that. But just being able to listen to them, spend time with them. And your kids are created different. Yep. You know, one of the things, like, both girls play volleyball. And Tinker and I, we just had the thing where we didn't push them to play anything. But we just told them, we was like, hey, if you're going to do it, man, do it all for the glory of God. Sure. And uh, and that's one of the things that the girls bond over. So they, they talk about it, and they had to explain a lot of stuff to Tinker and I because – I'm trying to pick up on it, but I still don't understand the nuances of it because yeah. I never played it. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, I mean, just spending time with them is, the, is the biggest thing. My, to, my to dad didn't know anything about soccer, but he still coached all three of us, me and my two brothers, yeah. in soccer. So he was, he was a part of that too, just being there. And absolutely what you said, it just helps, you know, like you wanting to get involved in crochet and all that. So just yesterday, Tinley had an art show. Mm-hmm. At Tabernacle, you know, you're talking elementary kids, you know, crafts and stuff like that. But she she wanted to go because that's what Tinley loves. She yes. loves – we got her an art table a couple of years ago for Christmas, and she loves it, and that's what she's into. And so yeah. she just wanted me to be there just to walk with her and just to listen and, and talk. And so it's incredible to know that parents be encouraged to just spend time with your kids, find what they love, find what they do, and get involved in it. And so, Madison, I know in here you can – share a lot of things. And we've kind of talked about prayer a little bit. And we talked about this a little bit before we got started about what maybe are some uh, notes, maybe some studies, some numbers we can give some parents to just maybe hear some things that maybe brings them to realize that, man, there's a lot of stuff we need to be doing or could be doing to continue to help our child grow as a godly child. So which you got some? He's got lots of papers over here, people. He's got some notes for us. I so. do. I, I I was I was searching online just to see if there was some things that maybe we could uh, I don't know have a grasp on and not just talk theoretically, but what are some practical things that we can do? Which what you just said, Draper's incredibly practical. Spend time with kids. But I found a study is put out by Lifeway Research, and it was just talking about the impact of certain spiritual activities that parents can participate with their kids and the impact that it has. And so here, basically, as the, as the uh, article goes, uh, some parents were asked, hey, describe your child, and these kids have since grown up, but describe what you did with your kids, and now let's look at them and let's see what you know, makes the most sense. And so some of, the, uh, some of these parents, uh, they, they had kids— that they said, hey, yeah, they're, they're raised in a Christian home and they profess to know Christ. Uh, some of the things that they did, they regularly took them to Sunday school. They took them to VBS. Um, they, uh, 
they attended the uh, the youth programming, uh, and all these things were helpful. But out of all of these, here's what this article says: one factor has significantly a, a bigger impact than all the others, mm-hmm. and and it was this: parents who read God's word with their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, that had the biggest impact on their child's uh, spiritual health into their young adult years. Sure. Now, I think we then would ask a question, because some people may say, okay, well, I'm going to do that tonight, and I'm going to check that off the box. But we were talking about it earlier. Why would anybody even do that with a kid? Well, most likely, I, I would say it's because they live it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that these parents probably weren't checking off a box at all. It was a part of their life. Yeah. Parents read the Bible. Kids saw a parent reading the Bible, memorizing Scripture, talking about the Bible. And so as, as a young child, these parents were probably telling Bible stories. Mm-hmm. They were probably having little moments of devotion, yeah. um, talking about, hey, what did you learn at Sunday school today? Sure. And so for me... Um, even in looking at this article, I think the biggest takeaway for me um, is I've got to have my kids uh, in the Word of God at home. Sure. Yep. Now, of course, I want to live it, and I hope I'm doing that each and every day, but outside of me just living out my faith, uh, I do want to make sure that their eyes get on God's Word and they're hearing Bible stories. And according to this article, there was j- there was a connection between those young adults, um, their spiritual health, based on that. So uh, it's a really interesting article, and if people are interested in it, and just they can contact you, Ryan, or yeah. me, and I'd be happy to get it to them. Absolutely, we can get that to you guys. And it's kind of like we were talking earlier, like you said, Madison, when children see adults or parents mm-hmm. in home reading the Bible, that almost has a bigger... Um, reason for kids to maybe get involved in it when they see what you're doing. Uh, we have to kind of live and li- lead by example well, by I the mean, things we do. Think about this. You are your child's hero. Sure. And so when they see their hero doing something, they're going to want to do it. Mm-hmm. I think about, you know, when Madison was talking, I think about Joshua 1.8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, right. but you shall meditate. meditate on it day and night. You know, so many times, I think by us meditating on Scripture, we could then, when life comes our way, when things come our way, we don't we don't have to go and grab the Bible and say, "Oh, let me find a, a, a scripture in God's Word that speak to that." We could speak truth into that situation right then and there, based on what the Lord has spoken to us. So it's that it's that that living it out every single day. That, that that really makes the impact. Well, we, we show our kids in practical way, man, this is how you live out your Christian faith in a practical way. That's right. You know, versus saying, hey, let me give you a, a three-point sermon. Sure, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, it's funny. Madison said VBS, and you said live it out, so my mind immediately went to a VBS song. Live it out, shout it out. Sorry, I got yeah. this. <laughs> got those exactly. stuck you already have the hand motions ready. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm ready to go, man. If we had this on video, Ryan was ready. <laughs> yeah, I was. He was ready. I was. <laughs> one, one additional thing I'll, I'll add, and this is, a, I mean, this has gone viral over Facebook, and you'll see the graphic that people will post. Um, and I know that there may be some, some single parents listening to this, uh, maybe a single mom. Uh, but statistically, the importance of a dad pursuing Christ and mm-hmm. the impact that that has. And again, just looking at stats, and where does this come from? I don't know, <laughs> but it's shared a lot online. Yeah. But also, so it's here, true. but he, but well, here's what I'll say though. And Draper, you know this because I shared this with you the other day. Um, the story of of Paul and Silas and the Philippian jailer. Mm-hmm. They praised. They stayed in the cells once everything was busted out. The Philippian jailer gave his heart to the to the Lord, and if you read the passage, so did his whole household. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yep. His whole household. To me, that says that the, the the man, if he follows the Lord, there's a good chance that the house will follow. That's right. good. Now, single moms, please pursue Christ with everything. And if your That's husband right. or if you don't have a husband, continue to pursue the Lord. But if there's any right. dads, the stats would suggest that when a, when a father pursues the Lord, comes to know Christ, 
there's a 93% probability that everyone else in the family will follow. Right. But when it's, when it's just mom, it's only 17%. And just an encouragement to that mom is that God tells us in his word that he'll be a father to the fatherless. Right. So and yeah. it, I just love his word where he talks about he'll talk about take care of the orphan, he'll take care of the widow, Amen. he'll take care of the fatherless. And statistics are true, but just an encouragement to the one that is pursuing Christ as a single mom that God's God's for, not against her. So Absolutely. good stuff, good stuff. Well, I'm going I'm to go ahead and jump over to you, Leslie, let you just kind of encourage these parents that we're all just kind of talking to here and just give them kind of an internal perspective according to God's Word and our kingdom purpose as parents and for these kids and kind of mention some scripture, just anything you can speak to them and just give them some, some spiritual joy, some spiritual impact as we kind of close this out here. So. Well, thank you. I feel like I'm in a room with just spiritual brains in front of me, and I'm just <laughs> I kind agree of the, too. the I'm, little one over here. But, I'm right there with but, you. Um, man, God is so gracious. And I guess one thing I was thinking about as I was praying through um, just speaking today is just, what do I say, Lord? And may you guide my words. And I, I just, I guess I want to beg the the people that listen to this, the parents that listen to this, please, please, please bring your children to church. Yes. You're you're enthusiastic about them playing sports, and I played sports growing up. I was involved in all of them outside of school at church and in school um, athletic teams, and I loved all that. Now, I grew up in a time that you could do school, music, and all the sports. That's, that's right. But if you're going to be that dedicated to getting your child to 50 million practices a week and everything else and all those games, please, 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 Bring them to church and not only bring them to church and drop them off. And, and we're glad to take care of them that way and minister to them and, and love on them and care for them and, and share the word of God with them. But may you be behind them 100 percent and be here with them. Right. And uh, just both my children were the, the start of that. Um, Holy Spirit drawing them to Christ was in VBS. Sure. And they both gave their lives after VBSs to the Lord and have lived for the Lord since then, and you, you know, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but God is forgiving and is gracious and he's kind and he's very merciful. So he has picked them back up and picked me back up through those moments. But um, just Sunday school, life groups, um, camps, the weekend, That's all right. those things are just so great. But they want to see you there with them. They want you to get excited. They want you to sit at home and go, okay, so who all is going to the weekend this weekend? Mm -hmm. uh, who all is going to be involved? Mm -hmm. um, are you bringing some friends? What's, what are y'all going to eat? Who's going to be there? Tell me something You're about it. You're not trying to meet a boy there, right? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then afterwards, talk about yeah. it. Spend that time with your kids. Sit down yes. and discuss with them what's going on. If they're going to the VBS, okay, teach me the, the movements to that theme song that That's you just right. came home with today. Play them Show in the car. me about it. Yeah. Uh, run in inside and, and come to the big group session when we're all in worship together yeah. that everybody will be a part of it, you know, and see what's going on so that you can have those discussions with their kids. But then one thing we talked about earlier is not only that and having that quiet time and that prayer time and reading the word to them each and every night and, and just praying with them and praying for them throughout the day. But one thing I've noticed is my kids, as they've gotten older, we, we had that night time, um, devotion time together. But one thing my heart longed for was for both my children to start having their own private time with the Lord in the mornings mm -hmm. and other times during the day. And Howard and I tried to not really so much to influence them to do so, but that was a part of our lives. Mm -hmm. So when our kids got up, they saw us somewhere yeah, sure. Sure, sure. spending that time with the Lord. Yeah. They saw us when we were upset and then having to apologize and ask the Lord for forgiveness. They saw us be real. Sure. So your kids need to see you live out what you're talking about That's and right. what they're being told and what they're being taught. That's they right. need to see you live it. So, so many times I feel like people learn so much more by what they watch and what they observe mm -hmm. than what you share or what you tell them. And what did you say earlier, Draper? You, you said what I won't remember. Josh. Faith is more... Faith is more caught, caught than, taught. than taught. And I yeah. think that's so true. I just, I think that's fantastic and so yeah. real. Yeah, so I, again, went back to the song, live it out, shout it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, man, you guys have been awesome today. Thank you for speaking to these families, giving them an internal perspective, helping them to see that there is kingdom purpose as a parent, uh, whether as a single parent or as a mother and a father together. Yeah. But, man, may y'all be encouraged to live it out yourselves in your house. And when you do that in this crazy world and they see yeah. you living out a kingdom purpose in your home, it'll start to impact your kids in incredible, whether as a child or as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So continue to pursue that. One thing I want to add before we close out, Ryan, is to the parents out there, 
you cannot do this alone. That's Absolutely. right. Yep. You cannot raise your kids alone. You need the Lord. Here's the thing that that helped me more than anything is understanding my role in my kids' life. Yes, I know in America we say we're parents, but really we're stewards. A steward is someone who has been given a, a task, a, a charge by the master. Our master is, is God. He has entrusted us with those kids for a period of time. So we have to get our marching orders from him. So if you're trying to do this alone without him, it's not going to work well That's because right. you're doing it wrong. But if you are are uh, doing what God has called you to do, yeah, you may have some difficulties, but I promise you he will guide you through everything. So seek him above all else. Seek yes. first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and let all of these things be added unto that's you. Right. So that's my encouragement to you is to seek the Lord. That's right. Three, st- three strand of rope cannot be broken. Amen. That's right. Amen. And if I, if I could just add, don't outsource the spiritual development. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. I think that this is where a lot of parents, this is going to sound bad, they, they think they're living it out because they bring their child to church. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is at home, they're, they're not seeing, right. uh, the child is not seeing the parent live it out. And, and their mindset is, well, well, we took them to Ryan. <laughs> well, we took them to the weekend where they heard from Caleb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we took them to, you know, wherever. Kids praise Kids, or wherever, yeah. Uh, Miss Leslie, and, and she taught them the word, don't outsource it. That's right. They've got to get it from home first. You know, (laughs) Draper, you said don't do it alone, and you were meaning the Lord. My mind first went to, hey, we want to do this together, Mm -hmm. like in community. And so, yes, but also God has tasked the parent, you know, single mom, single dad, mom and dad. It is it is their responsibility, their calling to raise up their mm-hmm. children. Yes. And so don't outsource it. Yeah. Yes. That's right. They word. they are the disciple makers at yes. home. And we as a yes. church are honored to walk with y'all through this. So if there's anything y'all need from us, please reach out to us. All right. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Madison. Thank you, Draper. We are honored to help you guys raise up godly children in this crazy world. So uh, thank you again. Have a great rest of the day.